Hello everyone, uh, it's Andy And today I'm very happy to be able to interview my friend She is all the way from Europe uh, In Luxembourg, in this country called Luxembourg And there is a 6 hour time difference But nevertheless, I can get hold of her And I want to ask her questions around how to be a good person So first thing uh, about Margarita She is a Portuguese by ethnic race and working and living in Luxembourg for people that may not know where's Luxembourg, Luxembourg is somewhere towards uh, uh, next to France, right? Somewhere in the Central Europe, right? And uh, so maybe Margareta, you can uh, describe a bit of uh, your occupation or what are your uh, what do you do most of the time? Eh? Uh, hi, Andy. Uh, thank you for being so enthusiastic. Um, as you always are, you're such an inspiration. Um, I am, as, as you said, I'm Portuguese. I live in Luxembourg, which is a small country, which has a capital with the same name called Luxembourg City. And uh, I work for the European Union, which is one of the options in this little country. If you don't work for the European Union, you would work for the bank, or you would work for Amazon, or you would, you would be a civil servant. For the Luxembourg system, so there are not many options here. <laughs> uh, so I, by working at the European Union, I we are working with 24 languages, which means 27 countries. Now that the United Kingdom unfortunately uh, left with the Brexit, and uh, that means that in all our meetings we have to be very open, very tolerant, very good-minded in order to be uh, creative and understanding of what people might want to be saying when they speak in a different language which is not their mother language Oh wow! Huh? So I can see just now you say something like we need to be very tolerant of different uh, cultures, different races, and there's so many. You said 24 languages in uh, European Union. Eh? I suppose with the war in Ukraine, it complicates matters <laughs> and Russia that kind. So I'm I'm very curious. Uh, how um, in Europe is there some uh, very common definition of what's a good person? Is there something? How do people define a good person in Europe? So, oh, with a Christian background, because Europe has had many wars all about Christianity, <laughs> either to become Catholic or to um, suppress the Protestants, yeah. but it's still it's still very Catholic and it's still mm. very Christian. And um, the morality would immediately um, taint the word good and bad, because if you're a good person, you you make it to heaven and you're good to your neighbors and you're good to your family and that's partly what comes to mind in a Christian society when thinking of the adjective good okay so it looks like it's more uh, based on religion yeah because that's how how Europe is right uh, for so many thousand years uh, unlike in Asia it's not so much based on religion uh, and it's uh, in the Chinese environment a lot is based on the uh, teachings from the parents and uh, the problem is that today the parents they are not taught in this so how can they teach the younger kids on all these things so it's all based on passed down generation to generation but the problem is the young generation parents may not have all this confucianism and all those things so that i see is a problem and uh, so uh, so uh, margarita so when you work or, or su survive in european union uh, I'm sure you come across many difficulties and challenges. People may, may, may give um, people give you a hard time because I, I, I do not know. I heard that some countries I would not mention the name. They are rather arrogant. Some people <laughs> and cold. They don't um, they don't smile and uh, and then of course Portuguese are warm. Uh, Spaniards are warm. Uh, Italians, uh, but then the the other countries may not be. So uh, how do you overcome that? Uh, if if you are warm, uh, but someone is very cold, very cold. How how do you uh, reconcile that? Yes, you make a very good point there. It is complex in our. <laughs> Um, yeah, natural and natural conversation because um, we not only we have the countries, but then we have the character of people 
that uh, we have many, many colleagues that we have to pass competitions in order to pass the tests the work where we work. So automatically the people who work there have to be very logical, very cold thinking. Otherwise they will not pass the tests, which is the <laughs> first barrier, I would say. So, um, because I passed the test also, <laughs> um, I, I am also very logical, very much in my head. So at least that we have in common. Otherwise, then uh, of course we bring the color from our country. And um, indeed, um, the Nordic countries depending. Germans I cannot completely generalize, but Germans can be yep. much more logic thinking, <laughs> they can be colder. <laughs> and yes, we can have also the majority of the French who are very difficult to convince because they have their ways and because they used to rule the world. And um, <laughs> yes, we have that detail. <laughs> and then luckily, as you say, we have the southerners, the, the Spaniards who speak with their hands and the Italians who are also very joyful and um, speak with many idioms and uh, very long sentences that never end. And um, somehow we managed to get consensus in meetings, which I admit is not easy. Uh, but it's necessary and we all understood that we start by concentrating on the common points we have mm. instead of concentrating on the divergent points. Mm. So by, by establishing what is common, what do we want and need to achieve in order to have a result in a meeting or in a convention or in a contract or whatever it is, we, yes, we have to discuss commonalities first yep. and then it is a very good basis and um, we, I think we can achieve some results. <laughs> okay, I see the, uh, looks like the main thing uh, to be a good person in Europe, you need to really work well with different people and find commonalities. Uh. So it's not so much of I alone, I'm a good person, but then if I cannot work well with other people, so that's a big problem. Uh.